Welcome back. Bill Helfrick joins us now for this week's Dollars and Cents segment, filling in, of course, for Bruce Porter. Where's Bruce? I think he might be on a boat trip somewhere. He gets up a in vacation? Alaska. Up in Alaska, yeah. He didn't just ask barely. me if he could take a vacation. I don't think he asked anybody. He just didn't show yesterday. No, but you and me can have some fun That's today. Right. So, Got yeah, it. wherever he is, have a good time, Bruce. All right, are you ready for today's question? I'm ready. Okay, here it is. I am now retired after 39 years of employment. In looking over my auto and home insurance policies with my agent, I noticed my liability coverage was $300,000 on each. Is that enough liability coverage to have, or how do I determine how much it should be? Now, to back up, this person is retiring yes. after 39 years of working, so they're probably... 60 something at this mm -hmm, point? Probably. Does that tell you anything? What do you think about this? Well, it's a good question because a lot of things have to do with how much liability you need is what you have okay. as far as a house. Mm -hmm. Is your house worth 300,000, 200,000? And then also how much um, retirement do you have? Okay. And one thing that we talk about is this 300,000. It can be enough, but an option is an umbrella. Okay. And what an umbrella might do, it will take care of your house and your car. So if you have a $300,000 liability on your house and your car and you have any problems, mm -hmm. then if you have a million dollar umbrella, that million dollar can take over for your uh, liability. So because it if it exceeds the amount of liability you have, then you open yourself up for yes. a myriad potential problems. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you do an umbrella, you can have 1.3 million, mm -hmm. plus you've got free attorneys that can help you out in the facts, and it would be a good way to save your retirement fund, basically. Interesting, so the umbrella comes with the legal advice that goes with it? Yes. I did not know yes. that. So. Really? Okay, so what, what are the differences, so like you said, really, potentially when you're having this conversation with your agent, you need to look at sort of where you are in terms of your income and you, if you own a home and that sort of thing. Income, what your net worth is, okay. basically net worth as much as anything. And you don't have to be retired to do an umbrella. It, it, you know, it's good to get them started before you retire. Okay. Because you're building up, you don't want to lose any everything before you get to retirement either. But somebody that's n a newer driver or a college student may or may not need that umbrella? Probably not okay. because if they would have the worst thing happen, they're not going to have the assets. They don't have the assets that someone exactly. could go after to cover it. Exactly. All right, what's the cost difference when you start looking at that? Well, most companies, all companies that mm -hmm. we have, that you have to have at least 300,000 liability for your house and your cars. Mm -hmm. The cost difference, they go, if you have two cars and a house, it's about just under $200 a year, the okay. cost, which is pretty cheap when you mm -hmm. think about the coverage you could receive from it. A small price to pay, potentially, if you were to have some kind of an accident. What about when you start getting into the more umbrella? I guess that varies greatly. Yes, yeah. Well, one thing is, it, it, if you've got your retirement, you might have $2 million in retirement, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you protect that, you can do a $2 million umbrella. Mm -hmm. You can go all the way up to $5 million in, in the companies we have, and it's well worth the pr price if you need it. Interesting. What are some of the things you need to look at when you look at your auto, specifically your auto insurance? Because there are different, um, you know, there's like the replacement value of the car, things like that. What are some of the things you need to look for first and foremost when you're looking into that? Well, one thing that if you have a car, it depends what it's worth if you want to do full coverage, mm -hmm. what they call full coverage, which is comprehensive and collision. Mm -hmm. And it depends how much money you have. If, if you've got a 10-year-old car, and you can walk away from that car if it has an accident. If you have an accident, then you might not need the full coverage. And you might have a 15-year-old car that, that you owe money on, so you need the full coverage. So mm -hmm. it just depends. Every situation's different. It's different, and that's when you really need to sort of sit down and have that conversation with someone. But that, that liability is key for everyone. The liability is key for everyone, and that's why the state state minimums, I think, are 25000 mm -hmm. 50000 and is what was 10,000, the 25,000 is per person, the 50,000 is per incident, and the 10,000 is the property damage done. 